Hey everyone, this is Greg Benz with another Photoshop tutorial. In this video, I'll show you how to use an incredible tool called Perspective Warp in order to make some dramatic improvements in your landscape images. Now this is a finishing step, so let me just jump back for a moment to show you the original raw exposures that I've already blended together. This is one of those exposures. You can see that the color is kind of drab, but it has all the right ingredients that I need for the sky. In particular, I love the look of these clouds. So I grab this raw exposure for the clouds. Then I grab some other exposures like this one to get the water coming over the rocks to just really, you know, create dynamic energy in the scene as well as some separation between different rocks. And then other exposures like this one that show the flow in the foreground. In total, I took seven different images, blended them together in Lumenzia to create this finished result. And it looks great. I'd be happy to post it online or print it and put it on my wall. But there's one element that to me is still not quite there, and that is this C stack just doesn't look as prominent as it was in real life. I used a 16 millimeter lens to capture this scene, which means that objects like this in the distance get relatively smaller compared to objects like this rock on the right in the foreground. So there's some distortion created by the lens. And on top of that, even if it wasn't trying to fix distortion, I might just want to make some changes in the scene for creative effect. I don't have to stick to reality. So it, it's really up to you how much you change things. I just want to show you what's possible with the tools in Photoshop. So you may already be familiar with a tool under the edit menu. We go to edit, transform, warp. A very commonly used tool to make adjustments in your image. You get this grid, these nine squares, and you can click on any of the edges or corners to move things around. Now you can see if I move this area with the C stack around, it's just changing its placement. It's not changing its size very much. If I'm willing to grab these edge points and drag them out, then yeah, I can make it taller, I can make it wider, but I'm pushing a lot of image content out of frame. And in this case, this cloud that I love so much is now starting to intrude on the edge of the frame, which means I have a bright object at the edge is leading your eye out of the frame. It's really not capturing the scene the way that I want. This is just too much of a generic tool. It's letting everything in the image move relatively equally. So it doesn't quite work for me. And when we accept the result, you'll notice that I'm working on a smart object, but even so, it's made a destructive change. You cannot see anything to change about this warp. If I click into this, I still won't be able to change the warp. So even with a smart object, you can't work non-destructively with the, the basic warp tool. So let's undo this. And instead, let's look at my preferred solution, which is the Perspective Warp tool. You could also go into Puppet Warp, but it gets a little bit squirrely. Things move around quite a bit. It's hard to keep things in their natural shape. So if you're working with smoke or water or things like that, it's a great tool. But for things like this mountain that I want to keep in its relative perspective, Perspective Warp is a better tool. And this tool is designed for architecture. So that's why you'll see some of the terminology in it and the way it's designed but we can use it for our purposes by just clicking and dragging to create these grids. So this grid is gonna define what you work on in the layout mode. And you can draw as many of these grids as you want. And then when you're ready, you click on warp and now you can start making your changes. You just click and drag these pins. So you can see that we can change the size of this thing quite a bit. But of course, the whole image is moving around as if it was a sheet of paper because it's a perspective tool. It's designed for architecture. And we have not constrained this image other than this one square. So everything else is free to move around completely. So we need to undo those changes in warping, go back to our layout. And what we need to do is draw more squares around this thing so the whole image is locked down. And then we can make changes without having all those unwanted effects. So I'm gonna get as close as I can to a corner point where I still have this cursor icon with the, the crosshairs, and then click and drag out. And the reason I wanna be close is see how that line turns blue? I'm just gonna let go and it will automatically snap together. And that means that these two are now one connected object because of that blue snapping, and that's what we need. I'm just gonna hit Command Z to undo that, so we're back to where we were. And we just need to create a whole series of these grids. So just get near it, get that cursor, and click and drag out, get the blue snap, and just keep on going to the next one. So take this, we'll click and drag out, 
Okay, that snapped together. I want to need to click and drag this. So I snap both of those corners. You want to make sure that these are all connected. If any of these two are close, but you don't get that blue connector, then that means that you do not have um, the geometry you need. It might look like things are overlapping, but until you get that blue, they're not connected and you'll get these weird artifacts where basically the gap between the rectangles stays put and things look really weird. And I do like to kind of keep these things relatively horizontal and vertical if I can. It just makes it a little bit easier if I'm trying to keep horizons straight if I can see where I started. So we're just gonna keep doing this until we've completed the entire grid. You don't have to create a grid of nine, but if you're working on something like this C stack that's in the middle, then you probably do because you wanna create one rectangle around the key thing you wanna change. You can make it relatively tight. There's no rules to what's perfectly right or wrong. It won't stop changing on the outside of it. It's just that this area inside here is gonna be relatively predictable. So that's why I created this. I could you know, move these elements around if I wanna change some of that geometry, but this is gonna work just great for what we need. So now that we're done creating the layout, we'll go back to the warp mode where we have a few different options. And on the toolbar here, you notice these three different options. These are all meant to straighten out your lines. So if I click on these, it'll just straighten these rectangles around. Let's undo that. We don't need that. That's designed for architecture. So you can really skip these first three options. This next one undoes the changes, kind of goes back to an unwarp state. Then we have the option to just quit the tool. That'll cancel all of our changes. So don't hit that, or we can accept when we're done. So we'll come back to that in a moment. So all we need to do now is just grab these points and move them around. Now notice when I move this around, the cloud is staying in frame. The bright part is staying where I want it here. And we can do a few other little tricks aside from just moving these around. If I hover over one of these lines, if I hold down the shift key, it turns yellow. And then if I click, it locks that yellow in and makes it straight, either horizontal or we can do it vertical. So this is one way I can click on the different edges of my original piece and try and minimize how much it's getting distorted. So now I can just kind of move out from these edges and you want to be careful with these yellow lines. If you get too many of them, you might start to see some weird artifacts where you over constrain it and Photoshop will have kind of right where these white lines are. Things just won't line up. They'll look kind of weird. So I tend to not over constrain these things if I don't have to just kind of click on that and Let's just create the geometry that we want here without getting too crazy. So I like how much that's improved that C stack already, just going for a modest improvement in the size. You gotta watch out for your corners. It's got some blank areas in the edges. We could use a content aware to fill that in if we want, but I'm just gonna choose to click and drag out these edges to fill that in. Just wanna move it as much as I need to finish that out. I don't need to go any further. And if I want, I can try and bring these edges in and see how much I can recover of the original image if anything is pushed a little bit too far, but I think things look pretty good. So we've got the whole image covered here and we'll go ahead and click OK to accept that result. Give it a second to render on our smart object and notice that it is a smart object so we can change what we've done. But we went from here to here, which I think has dramatically improved the prominence of that. It still looks very realistic looks much more true to the original scene that I saw. The horizon line is still straight. The clouds are still in a frame. Everything looks great. There's no white pixels on the edge. We got all that right. But if we needed to, we could just double click perspective warp and we'd be right back into the tool and we could continue making changes however we want to and then just hit okay. One last note, we do have a smart filter mask. Notice that I didn't have any sort of mask on my smart object, you know, like this. If you have the uh, any sort of filters here with a, with a mask or any mask on your smart object, perspective warp is only gonna warp the image content. So just be aware that if you do have a mask here, you're gonna have to put your smart object in another smart object in order to preserve the mask because it will not warp with your image, not even the first time. That is the perspective warp tool in a nutshell. Check it out, it's an awesome tool. And be sure to click the subscribe button on my YouTube channel and sign up for my newsletter at gregbensphotography.com newsletter.